What's up, kids? This is uh, David here with Solid X State Basement Church coming at you with another video uh, for your viewing pleasure and for mine. I hope you enjoy this. We're going to be looking at the book of Psalms here, chapter 2. Book of Psalms, chapter 2, starting in verse 1. Why do the nations conspire, and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together. You know, no doubt this speaks of, at any given time, what would be construed as the wisdom of the day. The wisdom of the day, that which is held as to be true regarding what is, that wisdom of the day that is the sum of people's worldview, it is agreed upon here. It is a notion of the time. It is those things for which people rally together, believing that they are woke, believing that the construct of ideas which binds them together, which unites them, is woke, is objectively real. And yet, uh, you know, what we have here it is the peoples, it is the kings, it is the nations, it is the rulers take counsel together. Saying, let us burst their bonds. Saying, they have taken counsel together against the Lord and his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds and cast their cords from us. Burst who bo whose bonds are they, are, are they? Who are they trying to free themselves from? From the Lord and his anointed. And what does that mean? What does that look like? You know, maybe what it means is that is that there is a cons at any given time the wisdom of the day in which people think themselves intelligent. This modern thought. You know, at how many times in history have have the people of the day thought themselves as modern, forward thinking? progressively awoke with eyes to see the future for what it is, putting off the baggage, the superstition of the past. And here, and here in this verse, their wisdom is that their wisdom that guides them. Is, is really to suggest that we know better. And that the value structure that the Judeo-Christian scripture points to, that that value structure is merely a construct of subjective religion. It's merely a construct of men. It doesn't have place in reality. It's not real. That the value structure of Judeo-Christian scripture and its, and its premise that God is preeminent, that he is our maker, And that with him is the dominion. 
that this is seen as illusionary. This is seen as a non-reality. This is seen uh, as, as fiction, fictional. And how is it today that so you hear so much of this notion of social construct and of the redefining of words as the words are mere pliable clay that can be made to say whatever we want, it can mean whatever we want. Four can be five, five can be eight, it's none of it is real. And you know, that's a popular notion nowadays. This idea, this putting off of the definitions of the past, the definitions that have served us so well and have brought us so far. And yet here we find ourselves, you know, certainly in the past this has been the case, but how much more even today, the desire to put off the boundaries, the terms, the definitions, the distinctions with which reality has been framed in a Judeo-Christian worldview. Certainly the West stands on these shoulders. The prosperity of the West stands on the shoulders of a Judeo-Christian worldview. And certainly the world, does it not stand on the shoulders of the West? And here in this verse, let us burst their bonds asunder and cast their cords from us. Let us put off their distinctions. Let us put off their values. Let us put off the narrative that, have, that has been presented to us as reality. Let us put it off. For reality, they think, is gray, is formless, is opaque, can be whatever we want it to be. Reality, they think, is ours to choose. We will decide what is, as serves our purpose. Is that not what they're saying? Let us burst their bonds asunder and cast their cords from us. He who sits in heaven laughs. The Lord has them in derision. There he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. This is to say that despite, despite our highest confidence and certainty, it may be that reality in the end is a certainty, that reality in the end will take the day. Unless our confidence is consonant with the facts of reality, we will be in derision. We will be terrified. It is a frightening thing, the scripture says, to fall into the hands of a living God. It is a frightening thing to fall into the hands of a living God. For reality will have its day. It says here that God laughs. He isn't threatened by our presumption. He isn't threatened by our plans to build a Tower of Babel. For were, for were we to draw our, our, our bows and arrows and shoot arrows into the sky to pull down the world around us, thinking that we will choose the dominion, thinking that we will name our kings. And God laughs and says, 
I have set up a king in Mount Zion, my holy hill. Holy means set apart. For God's mountain that is set apart from our conspiracy, from our the, the wisdom of our day, God's holy hill that is set apart, for there God has set up his king. A dominion in which all of beneath which all other dominions fade, but which beneath which all other dominions are not. They're nothing. They are less than nothing. For the dominion of God endures. For the dominion of God is greater not only than men, but greater than all. All things. All time. All places. Or as but dust. Or as but flowers that flourish but then they fade and they're gone in uh, Psalm Psalm 103 let's wrap this up Psalm 103 it reads as for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. You know, this life, you know, we think of this life as being solid, concrete, tangible. You can touch it. You can hold it. We think of this life as being solid. And yet it's really this life that is transient. It is really this life that passes. It is really this life that is like a cloud, that is like a phantom. But that metaphysical hill that is... God's holy hill, that, that metaphysical reality that is the kingdom of God, that is solid, that is concrete, that is forever. A thing that is forever is solid. A thing that is forever is immovable. It is our lives that are like smoke that are here and gone. Right, that's it. God bless, love you guys, take care. Watch another video, subscribe, all that business, yeah.